Hi, how you doing? I'm Seth. I'm Will. We're here today to talk about the proper way to set up a set of tower speakers. And we're going to go over three different elements that uh, you can do in a pretty snappy fashion. Yeah. But that uh, will give you the best sound possible. We're not going to get into things like equalization, um, the different calibration and receivers and processors, acoustic treatments, but just some quick things that you can do to make your beautiful new speakers sound a lot better. So, yeah. Um, first one a lot of people know about, second one, third one not so much, so hopefully this will help a lot of you out. So yeah. first thing we're going to talk about is the equilateral triangle to make a center channel, there's no center channel here right now, but to make it sound like these uh, are creating a phantom center, so it sounds like vocals come right from here. Yes. So the way you do that is let's say your chair is right there, we want to take these speakers and have these things, instead of shown straight, angled right toward your ears. So if I was to be right here, we want to point that at this ear, we want to point that at this ear. Um, not all rooms really have uh, an equilateral triangle where you can set them up because there might be other objects there or whatever. Yeah, in a perfect world, you, you could do, you could point them however you want and you'd have your listening position wherever you wanted, but not everyone has that. We all that. have homes and couches yeah. and objects and rooms that don't allow for that. A desk, entertainment center, a mantle. Yeah, so you got to work with what you have, definitely. Yeah. yeah, grandpa's chair where he sits. You can't really put the tower speaker on top of him. No, or one speaker's over there. Shape. Yeah, right. one speaker's there and one speaker's right here. Yep. So um, let's say if you have the speakers wider, that's fine. Normally, if you do have the speakers wider, when you tow them in, you might notice that that image is a little more focused. Uh, but the idea behind this is when you have speakers set up properly that way, um, it'll literally sound like there's vocals coming right from the center. It's kind of magic because it's like, hmm, there is no speaker there. Why are you producing sound? Um, a part of it also depends on the track. You want to use a good track when you're initially setting up this first step. Uh, there's some that we'll put this in the details for the video, but uh, we had used um, the Hotel California. I can't tell you why. Yeah, right. but yeah, you have, it's good to have a reference point, so pick a good one and, well, yeah. The, yeah, we'd fly me to the moon. Yeah, that one. Yep, yeah, that was really good. So anyways, that's the first step. Lots of people know about that. Now we'll get to the uh, little, little more tricky, tricky stuff. So um, bass can be a difficult animal for today's systems. Uh, you have bass modes and nodes, which are areas where you might have a couch. Person sitting on the right hears a ton of bass. Yeah. Person on the left's like, hey, I hear no bass at all. Modes are kind of standing waves in the room. Nodes are bass nulls, where like the person on the left doesn't hear anything. So um, normally when you're setting up speakers, there are ways to get more bass out of them just by moving them in and out of the room. So typically you want to take a speaker. This is a lot farther than this right now, but you don't want it about four to 12 inches off the back wall. And you'll find that if you put, get it in a certain spot and you move it out in the room slightly, you're going to hear more or less bass. Again, for this uh, exercise, more is better. So what you do is you pop them out in the room, get them towed in where they sound good, take some tape, tape off one corner of the speaker, yeah. tape off the other corner of the speaker. Then what you'll do is you'll put on a track that's got a real rhythmic bass note. Uh, Eagles I Can't Tell You Why is a good one we use for that because it's got the same mm, mm, or however the bass goes, the whole mm, 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 something like that. Uh, it's close. rhythmic throughout the whole thing, yeah. but so you have that same bass note, and what you can do is you can take your speaker, you wanna be careful when you do this, especially this spikes, so you don't punch through your foot and go Very to the hospital. Very careful, yeah. You will slowly move those out into the room, maybe four inches or so. I don't know if you can see right now, but we have the floor taped off over here where we had it for optimal bass, and in that spot, you're gonna hear more or less bass. Now you can do this with a partner, or actually when you're moving the speaker, you'll actually hear the difference yourself, and if you find another spot that's good, Take your tape, tape off one corner, tape off the other corner. And take the speaker again, move it to that other area. Let's say if that sounds worse, then we move it to another spot. And you're gonna find a spot that's gonna sound best in the room. Now, the room challenges we talked about earlier, you might have the best spot is literally in the middle of your living room. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not optimal for life. No. Yeah, but and, it yeah. sounds great. Yeah. So, you, know, you might have to find your second location. It's like, okay, he's in the middle of the room. Family doesn't like it too much, so let me move these back a little bit. Um, yeah. But that's going to be a way to get you much better bass out of your towers. Again, more bass, the loudest bass is going to be the best the best area for that. Yeah, careful with dogs and cats if you have them uh, while you're doing this. Also, be uh, aware of your speaker wire length. Um, you might want to disconnect them 
uh, temporarily as you move them and then plug them back in. So, I mean, it's... Yeah, and just yank out of the back of it. Yep. Yeah. Get, that, get if, that slack there to be able to do this exercise yeah. so yeah, it doesn't pop right out of the Don't back. Don't have your kids help you. They might, you know, they have a tendency to go towards the, the best part of the speaker and want to touch it. <laughs> oh, and they punch their hand through it while they're doing that? Yeah. Um, so that's number two. And then the third thing that isn't uh, really well known is adjusting your rake angle. Rake angle is when you move the speaker, ooh, where it goes back and forth here, right? Uh, you want to be a little bit careful because if your speakers have spikes, when you're doing this, you'll be punching holes in your yeah. wood floor. Um, so if you have a wood floor, just be very, very careful with that. Um, but the idea is this. In that first step, what we did is we found our center image. We made these speakers that are two boxes magically make vocals right here. Now that image, though, you might hear the vocals coming from two feet high. Now maybe you enjoy a singer. Uh, he's your favorite singer, but he, and he's actually two feet high. Probably not too many of those humans no. around these days. Tom Cruise, is Tom Cruise sing? No. <laughs> he's a little, little taller than that. <laughs> he's at least 3'6", right? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so let's say Tom Cruise is singing. Tom Cruise, I think he's 5'7", something yeah. like that. But he's not two feet tall. So you go, hey, I want Tom Cruise to sound like he's 5'7". Um, as you adjust the rake angle a little bit, you might find where, and the way you can adjust this is you'll have either spikes or posts you can turn those just like you're turning a screw. So you might turn it, you know, 360 degrees on both speakers, right? Let's say that adjusts it up to here. And you're like, okay, now Tom Cruise sounds four feet tall. So you do it again. Let's say you go way up. Oh, now Tom Cruise sounds 18 feet tall. All right, he's not quite that tall. So you can get it to a certain point where those vocals are at a decent level and adjusting that rake angle will make things m much more realistic. Um, that point you're dialed in. You've just, uh, You've just uh, done all of the elements of the master's speaker training. Congratulations. Which is a a three-day dealio that they do at Sumico, which is kind of a high-end audio company. Uh, you just learned what I spent in three full days there. Uh, you just learned that in however long this video's been. Let's minutes. just call it three minutes. That sounds good. Let's call it, yeah, three, day, three minutes for three days. <laughs> That'll be the new title. It's a good trade-off. I mean, you're getting you know quick, good knowledge, and it's uh, good to go into this with a clear mind. Anything you've, I've read or learned, throw it out the window and work with these three steps in three minutes and you can work wonders for your listening sound pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you very much for stopping by. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. Thank you.